Hi guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whatever it is that you're listening from. Thank you so much for tuning in, for following through with the, this Bible summary and hopefully for sharing the audio or the podcast link with as many people as possible. Today we'll be covering the book of Leviticus chapter 27. We have finally come to the end of the book of Leviticus and I know you can't see me, but I promise you I am doing a happy dance. Like, oh my gosh, this book has been quite a challenge to get through. But that's the reason why we are doing this, to understand the context and see the big picture of the character of God, even from these books that we hardly read, (laughs) the ones that we don't like to read because they're too complex. So in Leviticus chapter 27, the Lord told Moses and Aaron that if a man promised to give either an animal, house, land, or property, or a servant, or even a child to the Lord God, he must keep that promise and not change it. But God said these vows could be redeemed if they could not be fulfilled. Anyway, let's get straight into the summary. Alright, so God gave specific instructions on the amount of silver that was to be given if a man wanted to free a servant who was promised to God. Males were worth more than females and a male between the age of 20 to 16 was worth 50 silver shekels and a woman was worth only 30. People were worth less if they were younger than 20 and they had no measurable value until they were at least one month old. Men would, men who were older than 60 were worth 15 shekel, and the women over 60 were worth only 10. That's like if you have promised uh, one, of your, one of your slaves or one of your servants to, the service to, to go and serve in the temple. If you wanted to take them from the temple, this is how much you would pay. This is basically what that that that's a context like if, if i had a servant and i decided you know what i want to give the servant to the to 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 the service of god like maybe to go and work in the temple and that and then i wanted my servant back this is how much i had to pay so god said that animals were offered to him sorry god said that an, an animal that was offered to him should not be altered or changed he said that if an animal had been exchanged for another, they should be equal, of equal worth. Also, a beast that was considered unclean should not be offered at all. Instead, it should be brought before the priest who would evaluate it. And a 20% penalty was added if the person who offered the animal went to buy it back. Like, let's assume if you went and gave an animal, like maybe you went and gave a bull to the temple. And you decided that's the vow, that's what I've given. And then later you have this bull that has short legs or long legs. <laughs> and you wanted to go and exchange the one that is in the temple because it has no blemish. And then you offer this other one that has blemish and it has, you know, it's not all together there. That was not allowed. And if you did that, both of them, the one that you took that you thought was bad, And the one that you had given that was good, all of them would be termed as offering. So you'd actually almost like lose both to the, to the, to the temple or to the, yeah, because men are men and that's just basically what they would do. But if you wanted to buy something back, you would have to pay like uh, a fifth more of what it's worth. So Leviticus chapter 27 also has guidelines on what happens if a man offers a house as a gift. The priest would be called upon to evaluate the house and decide the fair price for it. If the person wanted to buy the house back, he would have to pay an extra 20%. A person could also make a gift of a field that belongs to to his family and the value of the field would be dependent on what kind of seed and the amount of wheat that was to be planted there. This portion of land would revert back to the giver or the giver's heirs, or rather the original person. No. What am I saying, you guys? <laughs> this is what I mean. Like if you promised, you, you gave a piece of land 
to the church let's let's just say that or to the temple and then at the year of jubilee remember the year of jubilee things would go back to the original owners so it would go back to you after on the year of jubilee and if you are not there then your sons or your heirs would now take the land one way to keep the giver honest was to make the law if they tried to sell it to someone else it would become the lord's during the jubilee year once that happened it would not revert back to the owner or the, the yeah. so now if you if on the year of jubilee the land came back to you and you tried to sell it to someone else then on the year of jubilee the year after the next year of jubilee the land would actually go back to the temple and from that point it would never go back to you that was like the end of it this masked person might also buy the field of another israelite and offer it to god the priest would also evaluate this property and determine a fair price for it Leviticus chapter 27 also lists gifts that cannot be offered to God because they already belong to him. And these include animals and tithe and the tenth of all crops. You can't offer something that already belongs to God. So you can't make a, to, a vow to give God your tithe, yet it already belongs to him. Like that was it's redundant. <laughs> so this chapter teaches us two things. First is the importance of giving towards the running of a church. Because churches do run on finances for maintenance and operations. And that is the reason why people were giving these vows and these gifts to the temple. Because the temple needed to actually, you know, sell these things or to make exchange with these things and actually maintain itself and run as a temple. And also, it is an opportunity for people to receive blessings from God. Because God blesses those who honor him with their resources. Second, it teaches us the value of a vow. In this context, a vow is a promise to worship God with a certain offering in the future, motivated by gratitude for God's grace in the life of the giver. The vow was made promising to offer something to God if God would intervene on behalf of the individual, making the offering possible. In many instances, the vow was made in time of great need or great danger. Like in the case of Anna, who vowed that if God gave her a son, she would give him to the Lord all his life. And later, Samuel was conceived and he was given to the service of God in the temple all his life. This voluntary act of worship means, you know, like this vowing and this, because it's a voluntary act of worshiping, is the highest form of worshipping in the Old Testament worship. And this chapter assumes that men will, out of gratitude to God for his mercy and grace, will make offerings that are a response to love, not to the law. And how appropriate for the book of Leviticus to end on a note of love, you know, rather than on a note of law, because that's what we'll be, we'll be reading, just instructions, 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 instructions. But at the end of this chapter, it is assumed that people will actually give gratitude for having seen how God, how gracious God is and how loving God is that actually people would respond with the highest form of worship, which was the, the voluntary act of worshiping by giving vows. And it's so nice that this book ends on that note, you know, a note of delight, not necessarily a note of duty. I really do hope that you have enjoyed the book of Leviticus and that you have picked new things, new perspectives, and most importantly, that you have seen the love of God in these chapters. This is the end of the book of Leviticus. And as usual, we shall be taking a seven-day break to help those that are lagging behind to catch up with us before we start a new book. This means that we shall start the book of Numbers on on Friday, the 3rd of June. So see you guys on 3rd of June. This is your girl Wakeji Kamore. And this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore.